What's going on, guys? So, for those of you that don't know, um, I'm a big Ohio State fan, and I know some people have a deep-rooted hate for Ohio State, especially people from a, uh, a small state that's a part of Canada. Um, but, and if that makes you dislike the show, then it is what it is. I was born and raised in Ohio, and that's what it is. I'm not a bandwagoner. Um, but today's January 1st, 2023, as I'm recording this. And last night, which would have been December 31st, 2022, um, Ohio State and Georgia played in the college football playoff. One seed Georgia, four seed Ohio State in Atlanta. And Ohio State lost in the final seconds uh, with a chanked field goal. Obviously, that's one play. There's you know a litany of things that they could have done differently throughout the other 59 minutes and 40 some seconds that would not have required a last second kick um, to win the game. But here we are. And I really don't want to talk about that, but I want to talk about something else. It's very interesting to, this is something I noticed in myself because I've been kind of in a, I guess, somber mood, pissed off, disappointed mood for the last almost 12 hours. And this I'm recording this, it's noon right now, so noon on January 1st, and the game ended at midnight, basically, of this morning or last night, however you want to look at it. So almost 12 hours. And I'm still kind of pissed. Um, but it's very interesting. You know, our expectations for our teams are high. You know, we expect to win every game, uh, most of us. I mean, obviously, if you're like a really small school I'm not going to name names, but you guys kind of know what I'm talking about. And then obviously people might not expect them to win every game. But if you're one of the big five, ten powerhouse schools, you know, you pretty much have that expectation. I'm talking about like a Michigan, Ohio State, Alabama, Georgia, you know, Tennessee this past year, you know, USC, Florida, the big schools that everybody's well aware of that have national recognition. Um you expect to win every game. The fan base expects to win every game. The fan base expects to have blowouts every game, meaning the defense pretty much shuts out the opponent. They maybe get a field goal. Zero is even better. And the other, their offense just blows the doors off the team. And when that doesn't happen, or when a team loses, um, people get pissed. One t people lose one time. I mean, a good example is Alabama in the last year. So this is the 2022 season. In case you're listening to in the future, for the last nearly a decade, decade plus, Alabama has been the dominant force in college football across the board. If you look at a lot of the stats, they're pretty much were the dominant team across the board. And this past season, they had two losses. Two losses that were granted on the road in tough environments against, at the time, I think both teams were top ranked top five. I mean, and they didn't lose by much. They lost by less than a touchdown. I think you can go back and look. But the point is, the last 10 years, they've had a pretty much a, you know, a winning record. Um, not a winning record. They had a winning record based on the college football playoff or national title almost every year, except this year. And there might have been other years, but you get the point I'm trying to make. That was their standard. And that's what they did. And then they had two losses this year, and people are basically calling for people's heads, you know. They need a new quarterback. The head coach sucks. He's falling off his game, this, that, and the other. Same with Ohio State when we lost to the team up north um, at home this year for the first time in over 20 years after a decade plus of just us winning every time. But the point I'm trying to make is in college football, the fan base by and large has a very high expectation of the team. And when that expectation is not met, they get pissed, livid, calling people's heads, saying ridiculous stuff on the internet, just, you know, going at it. But in life, we don't hold ourselves to that level of expectation for ourselves. We don't, um, we make excuses. We make excuses way more for ourselves for why we don't go to the gym or why we don't do certain things, why we don't get our work done or why we're distracted or why we spend time on social media, or why we just purely fuck around with our own life. And, you know, as I'm, reflected over the last like 12 hours of just I didn't sleep well I was still just not happy about it um I just found it interesting that in my own life that 
there have been times where I've made excuses for myself and I've you know let things slide or I've justified things and I've let myself lose quote unquote in life and I haven't really been pissed about it I just kind of justified it and say tomorrow's a new day and go on with it but when a sports team loses that I care about that I root for that I support that I literally don't have a I have no there's nothing I personally can do um to control the outcome of the game. I couldn't have practiced harder. There, I, I don't, I'm just in a, in a bystander watching. And even though I have zero effect on the game or the outcome, I take it personally that I lost, that I could have done something better, that I should have done this and then in a different mood. Where, it, But it's, there's nothing I can do. But in my own life, I, there's times where I'm just justifying things or I'm okay with losing or not completing the five critical tasks I need to complete or just, you know, fucking off in life. And I just find it very interesting that a majority of society holds our sports teams on such a high pedestal that we don't hold our, we don't put our own life on that same playing field with the same expectations, with the same emotions when we don't lose, with the same um, vigor, drive, enthusiasm, dedication, that we have towards a sports team, something that's literally something most of us listening have zero control over unless you are a team member or a coach um, or somehow have an impact on the team. Um, I think that's the, the big message for myself, at least for 2023. If I had to pick a theme, my theme would be, you know, play life. Life is a game. Life is a sport. Everything we do is a sport. People can say there's no competition and they can say whatever they want, but it's not true. And I think the theme for 2023 is for me, if I had, if I had to pick one, it would be to play this like it's a sport, play this like it's a game, prepare like it's a game, um, have the expectations that you have for your sports teams and, you know, play to win, play to kill and play, with intensity. Anything else or anything else is not acceptable. So if you say you're going to do something, do it. If you say you're not going to do something, don't do it. If you say you're going to um, earn a certain amount, look a certain way, whatever the case might be, execute on it. Don't make excuses for it. You know, play with that intensity that that you have towards something you have no control over. That's the bottom line, and. Let's go execute this year.